Norm's a little pinch for rent money. Needs a hundred dollars. I suggested we come and see you about a loan from the credit union. Well, sure. Just to have it by tomorrow, that's why we're bothering you tonight. Oh, that's all right. Step over to my office, huh? This is where I do my homework. You know Norm's good for it. Yeah, I think the credit committee will okay. Uh, look, don't I have to join something? I haven't even got money enough to join anything. I... Got a quarter you can spare? Oh, yeah, I can do a little better than that. All right. Let's make it 50 cents. Okay. Okay, sit down. Pull up something now, will you, buddy? Yeah. Now, Norm, your first quarter is your entrance fee. You pay that once and once only. The other quarter will apply on your first share in the credit union. A full share is $5. You can pay for it a quarter each payday or faster if you want. You can own as many shares as you want. The more shares you have, the more dividends you earn. But as soon as you own any part of a share, you're a member of good standing. And borrow for any good purpose that's okayed by the credit committee. Hello, Fiend. Miss Cliff. Yeah. Uh, Norm Roberts is at my house. Yeah, that's right, from engineering. Well, uh, he's joining the credit union and he needs a loan of $100 right away. Yeah, that's what I thought. You call Sanders and Brickle and call me right back? I appreciate it. That's uh, Pete Roebuck. He's the chairman of the credit committee. Sanders and Brickle are the other two. He'll check and call me back. We can work on this. You have to fill in this. This is your address, birthplace, wife's name, so forth. I'll do this here. Well, uh, uh, how much is this loan going to cost, and how soon do I have to pay it back? Oh, we can work it out any way to suit your convenience. I make this suggestion. Payday at the shop is weekly. Why don't you pay it back at $2 a payday? Interest is 1% per month on the unpaid portion. No other charges. On uh, $100, your interest the first week would be 25 cents. Each week it gets less. Now, let's see. That's two and a quarter. Now, why don't you make it two and a half each payday and let the rest of it go into your savings account? We try to get our members to save regularly, no matter how little. It's a good thing, too. I've known guys who never saved a cent before. Hello? Yes? Yes, please. Oh, that's fine. Thanks a lot, fella. Bye. It's okay. Credit committee will meet in the morning and approve it. You can drop by the office any time after 8 o'clock and pick up your check. You just sign your name there. Wonderful. Let's see here. Where do I sign? Oh, yeah, right here. X marks the spot, huh? You might call it that. I prefer to think when you sign up with a credit union, that you're King's X. King's X? Mm-hmm. Remember from your history how it all started centuries ago when people were thrown in prison for debt? If you found favor with the king, he might send his messenger around to put an X on your door and the sign of the crown? And no one dared enter your house and take anyone for debt as long as it had the king's ex. Well, that's what your credit union does for the homes of its members. It protects them in times of financial troubles. King's ex. Well, I'll be darned. I've heard that expression all my life, but I never knew the story before. All I knew was it meant you were safe. There you are. And that's your passbook. Here's your application for the loan. You just sign it there. Yeah. I'll never see that sign again without thinking of King's X. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate both of you taking all this trouble for me tonight. Boy, what a load off my mind. That's what friends are for. I remember last winter I got the entire credit committee out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning to okay a loan to keep a guy from going to jail. <laughs> He and I and the sheriff sat right in my office till I got the money. God. <laughs> As Barney says, that's what friends are for. And a credit union is just an organization of friends. That's why we're able to do what we did tonight. Barney knows you, and I know you. Pete and the rest of the committee know you from working with you. We know you're honest. Just because you suddenly become pinched for money doesn't mean you've suddenly become dishonest. Although a lot of organizations act that way. Oh, sure, they'll uh, lend you a lead pencil if you uh, give them your fountain pen and let them hold your watch till they get their pencil back. 
Now, there are two ways that your credit union looks at this thing differently. They don't believe when a fellow's in trouble that that's the time to take advantage of him. They think that that's the time to go easy on him. And secondly, they believe that a reputation for honesty is better than collateral. A house may burn down, or a car may get smashed or stolen. But a man who is honest will pay when he owes. I feel a little silly staying away from the credit union until I was in trouble. Oh, that's all right. We're used to that. That's how credit unions were born, out of human desperation. For years, there were the debtors' prisons, dark, slimy dungeons, where the chain victims had to fight off the rats to eat their horrible food. When it finally became evident that a man in jail is hardly in a position to pay up, the next step, if he happened to have insurance, was to drag the poor devil off to the auction block. There, the highest bidder bailed out the unfortunate, but in return acquired the policy, payable on the poor wretch's death. It's no wonder, considering the kind of men who bought up these things, that it usually wasn't long before the old guys came to sudden and violent ends. Before and after came the loan sharks, and so the world went. A few rich people, the rest living in debt all their lives. And then a little more than a century ago, in Bavaria, in a small town. The mayor got the rich to set up a fund from which the poor could borrow. But the idea didn't last long. The rich soon lost interest. Starving farmers called on the Burgermeister. Crops had failed again. And their farms were in hock at such high rates they'd never pay out. He decided the only way was for the people to help themselves. Only those belonging to that farming community could borrow, and then only for productive purposes. The interest would be low, and the man's character his best security. That was the beginning of credit unions. In 1900, the first credit union was formed in Canada, then in the United States. Few at first, but year after year, more and more, faster and faster, like a snowball rolling downhill. Till now, there are thousands of groups with millions of members from coast to coast, in both the United States and Canada, and also in other countries. You know, Norm, lending money is only part of our service. Now that your immediate problem is solved, why don't you drop into the office at the shop and let us talk a little about money management, huh? OK. If you can tell me how to stretch a nickel any farther than I do, Ethel, my wife, is very thrifty, too. Just for fun, what do you call thrift? Saving money. Saving it how? Well, by not spending it. Can you save money by spending it? Huh? Suppose you didn't have a refrigerator in your home. You'd either have to pay more for food in small quantities or see some of it go to waste. Either way, it costs you money to be without a refrigerator, right? Yeah. Well, now, there are three ways to buy a refrigerator. Wait until you got the money to pay for it, buy it on the installment plan, or borrow the money from your credit union, pay cash, and save the extra charge of the installment buying. In other words, Norm, the money you work for, make it work for you. Farmers and their credit unions borrow money for seed, fertilizers, tractors. Industry members borrow money to buy a car, to drive to work, or to improve their homes. That's thrift. Besides, in most credit unions, both your savings and your loan are insured. How do you mean? Tell him about Eddie Plum. Well, Eddie had a truck garden. He uh, bought a delivery truck with a loan from our credit union and was saving regularly when he got killed. 
He had saved over $1,000 in the credit union, but he still owed $1,200 on the truck. And I suppose $1,000 helped to pay off the loan. No, the loan was automatically paid off, and his widow got to keep the truck and continue the business. And she kept $1,000 savings, too. More than that. The credit union matched his thousand with another thousand through its insurance. And instead of being broken with no income, the widow had the truck free and clear and two thousand dollars besides. And this insurance cost Eddie nothing extra. It was part of the credit union service. Well, I could kick myself for not being in on this before. Well, better late than never. <laughs> hey, it works! <laughs> Do you know that your house really looks nice? Thanks. Say, that isn't a new refrigerator, is it? Yes. Norm get a raise? Not exactly. We're just getting more work out of his paycheck. You look the best I've ever seen you. Maybe it's peace of mind. Or maybe it's my back condition. I haven't been to the doctor since we got rid of that old washer. New washing machine, too. Mm -hmm. hm. I'd settle for a new vacuum cleaner, but Al thinks he's got to have a car worse. I know what you mean. Norm said the other night, when you get right down to it, the difference between just living and really enjoying life for most folks is maybe the difference of a few hundred dollars. You're so right. And just that much difference we get out of our credit union. Golly, it's getting late. Norm will be home any minute. I don't see why they don't have a credit union where Al works. They will. When enough people in any group find out what they're missing, they start one. <laughs> 